Hey folks, welcome back to Retirement Roadmap with Master Plan Retirement Consultants, and thank you for joining us. Today is part two of last week's episode, How to Retire Early. Now, we've taken some bullet points uh, from a Kiplinger article, How to Retire Early in Six Steps by Jacob Schroeder, and we've added uh, some of our own flavor to it, some of our own bullet points as well. Uh, Mark, how are you doing this week? Doing great. We, you know, it's always exciting because we have a face-to-face -face, uh, workshop, a couple of them this week. Yeah, And you absolutely. know how much we love doing that and, and, and getting to be in the presence of folks and teaching and, and, and um, the questions that come back. So, you know, the, the video webinars that we do are great. But you know how much we love getting out and teaching live, face-to-face. -face it's always of. better. It's always, the interaction is better. Mm -hmm. It prompts more Q&A, uh, live, live interaction. And, and the more people there, the more Q&A and discussion happens. And then you get to dig a little bit more into specific questions. Well, I also nice. get to catch people sleeping. Yeah, I exactly. can't do that on the <laughs> webinar. So. Exactly. No, um, no. <laughs> that's a good point, though. We're teaching a, a course on taxes and retirement this week. Uh, two separate opportunities. Check out our website, masterplanretire.com. Go to the events page and uh, you'll be able to see where and when we're teaching. If you're in the area, Marietta, Georgia, feel free to join us. We'd love to have you. Uh, Registration is super easy. It's a complimentary workshop, so check it out. Taxes and retirement. And more coming. So Absolutely. always keep an eye out on the website for there's, those. Right. There's always, every month, there's uh, at least one or, or multiple things happening, whether they're seminars or webinars. So check it out, masterplanretire.com. Yep. Uh, so uh, to jump right into the topic, how to retire early. Uh, we went through uh, the first three kind of points that I want to review those a little bit today mm -hmm. before we jump into the next point. So number one, we said set a, uh, set a high savings rate. Yeah, if you start, especially the earlier you start, if you, know, if you don't have the money to spend, you don't get used to spending it. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've got some folks that, uh, you know, they have their kids and, and are doing a great job. And every time they get a raise, they save at least half that. So they add that to their savings as well. So you've got to have a disciplined approach and, and just set a goal. If you're married, make sure as a couple you set a goal and say, you know, we're going to save this much. And then when we can bump it, we're going to bump it. Uh, the sooner you start, the, the less painful and the more you'll have when you retire. I really like that concept um, from the clients of saving. If you get a raise, put away half of it, use the next. Is You know, it's no joke right now. It can be really tight for folks. Yeah, we have inflation, and I know some of that has to go toward that, But and I'm not saying, you know, starve yourselves, but, you know, reward yourselves with spending some of it and reward yourself with saving some of it. That's good. So, uh, yeah. Number two was maximize your income. Yeah, and we so some of the points we talked about was, uh, was it doing hobbies, working part-time or overtime, uh, pursuing additional education. Some of the other points were... Well, Mainly, sure, and part of the saving as well is maximizing your income now, mm -hmm. but also particularly for retirement, how many income sources are you going to have? Right, and a lot of that won't come about until you get closer to retirement as well, but I mean, it doesn't hurt. I've got, I've got several clients that, uh, again, they have businesses on the side, maybe they sell stuff online, or like we said earlier, have a, you know, additional education, additional certification, so that you can save more so that you will increase your income in retirement. Those that are getting close to retirement, think about, you know, what's a way to, to have another stream of income? Maybe it's a rental house, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's um, some of the tools we use uh, that give guaranteed income. Maybe it's, again, uh, you know, maybe you, you think about working part-time. A lot of the clients we work with, they're like, well, you know, I'm retiring at 62 or 65. I don't see myself just sitting at home. Mm -hmm. And so I do want to travel, but also would like to work part-time and do something I really want to do, things like that. So lots of different sources and, and ideas that we can give clients. Absolutely. Uh, number three kind of goes with number one, uh, number one being set a high savings rate, but control your spending. Yeah, there's that ugly word again, right? Yeah, Budget. No one likes that word. <laughs> oh so, yeah, uh, we may have to blip that out. Uh, so yeah, you know, and and we talked about last time. There's lots of uh, software and things like that that can help you track your budget. It's not like the old days where you had to put cash in different envelopes. I mean, you can still do that, but uh, it's it's much easier now to track it. Uh, we've got some clients that put everything they spend like a one card. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they have everything that they spent that month. I'm not, not month. I'm not talking about house payment and car payment, but of course, you know, the coffee shop and the restaurant and the grocery store, uh, and they earn points a lot of times too. But that's a great way to track it as well. There was a good quote uh, as well. Now, before I spend money, I ask myself one question: Is this worth my freedom? I like that. Yeah, we. I think you mentioned that last time too, yeah. and it's worth mentioning again. That's um, again a thought process. You know, the old. Um, a story of, um, you know, think before you buy. It's so easy if you're in a store and you see an end cap. Well, guess what the end cap's there for? It's something to entice you to buy it. You know, either some sell or it's a really cool toy or, or tech 
tech toy or whatever, and, and so this, that's to get you to grab that. And, you know, that's fine, I guess, if it's on self you need it, but, but just think about it. especially if you're ordering things, Amazon is addictive. Mm -hmm. You know, and you get on there and you start to see some really cool stuff, and before you know it, you've got 12 packages arriving, you just spent whatever you spent. Yeah. And so, yeah, have a more disciplined approach. Yeah, and you know, we've also, this could also be a completely no, uh, next bullet point, but under this one, also pay off and avoid debt. Specifically, look at those things that are gonna pile on a lot of debt. There's some debt that we have to take on. And you know, you mentioned before, some people use credit cards monthly as their uh, part of their budget to, to do it all in one place, of course. Um, and that's, that can be a healthy way to do it, especially if you're earning points and getting future uh, discounts on things. Um, but look at those wealth killers. New cars can be re really tough. I'm um, yeah. taking on debt for that. Um, big things like that. Watch out for your debt. And if you can pay yeah. it down, the better. Yeah. And with rates being high right now, too, it's not a great idea to do that right. as well. But certainly, and I know, you know, back two or three years ago, you could go get a new car with zero interest. Mm, you could play with the math a little bit. But... You know, I love buying three-year-old cars. They've been on lease for three years. They're they're thirty to forty percent less expensive, uh, still under warranty. Maybe buy a warranty on top of that. Maybe not. You, you know, is that good or bad? I don't know. But, I mean, that's that. When you're buying a car and you're paying four, six, eight percent interest, and it's losing value every mile you put on it, mm -hmm. that's not an investment. So, uh, but if you have to, that's okay. Definitely the credit cards, though. They're so expensive. They're so hard to pay off. Uh, right now, they're, I've seen credit cards 28 up to 32, 33 percent. I mean, yeah. it's just crazy. Yeah. And so, really, those are those are definitely wealth killers. Yeah, for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. So that brings us to the first topic for today. Continuing this discussion, number four: invest wisely. Start out, invest early and often. Exactly, and don't be afraid of the market when it comes yeah. to investing. Um, you know, I know investing technically means the market, but um, you know, we work with a lot of federal workers, and a lot of the federal workers, you know, you know, use the thrift savings plan as their savings vehicle. And uh, probably every time we teach a federal class, I kind of talk about the different funds, and I have two or three people kind of sheepishly looking down because they're sitting in a G fund, which is kind of like a glorified money market. It's mostly government bonds paying two to four percent. It's the same thing as sitting in a money market, you know, when you're 25 years old or whatever. Get, you know, put your money in, in that 401k, that TSP, 403b, and let it run. I yep. mean, just let it run. If you're 30, uh, 25, 35, 45, five to 10 years away from retirement, let it run. The market makes money over time. And when the market, uh, you know, takes a hit, has a three-day correction mm -hmm. like we had a couple of weeks ago, uh, don't panic. Had We only had two clients call us. <laughs> and, and one was like, should we move to cash today? And I said... The minute we moved to cash, tomorrow would be a big day. And guess what the next day was? Mm. A big day. And so he emailed me back and he said, thanks for talking me off a ledge. And you, you know? said, how, how many stories do you have? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah what's, what, what level are you on, yeah. so, so to speak? So, But yeah, it's, it's just let, let it run. Now, if you're closer to retirement, if you're you know, five to seven years away, maybe talk to a professional like us to, to get a better idea of better positioning for retirement. Uh, but investing wisely means just take advantage of the stock market, which is which averages, you know, six to nine percent long term. That's great. So from point one, we talked about maximizing savings. What would you tell someone the difference between savings and investing or even how to allocate between the two? Yeah. So savings is something you can get your hands on pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. OK, so and there's no penalty to get to it. Mm -hmm. So whether that be a savings account at the bank where you can automatically move money over to it or, a, you know, a savings account at Capital One or whatever, where you can transfer money over. That's for that stuff that pops up. That's for that roof. That's for that um, maybe a new car or used car, you know, if you can save up, uh, up enough. But you've got to have those three to six months of income stashed away, that's savings because it's safe, it's not going anywhere, uh, doesn't cost you to, to, to put that money in there and you can get it in you know, within a couple of days. Investing is um, in something that can lose money, right? So uh, that's not a great backup bucket because if you need the money and it's down five or 10%, you're selling at a loss. Mm -hmm. And so that's more a little longer term. Now, it may be a two-year term. It doesn't have to be a 10-year term. Maybe uh, with a lot of our clients, as you know, Evan, we'll have a, maybe a two-year growth bucket, 
pretty conservative. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be down 20 percent, um, but it's going to average maybe four to seven percent. Then we have maybe a, a five-year bucket and then maybe a 10-year bucket getting gradu gradually more uh, moderate to moderately, uh, moderately aggressive mm -hmm. for those longer terms. So that's investing. Investing means it can go up and go down. Savings is principal protected. Yep. So any retirement, whether it's uh, on the normal, typical timeline or an early retirement would be highly difficult to achieve without investing. Uh, to retire early, you would consider maxing out your employer's retirement plan if you have a 401k, 403b, something like that. Um, beyond that, if you're able to put more away individual retirement accounts, IRAs, Roths, things like that, health savings accounts, any other investment vehicle you choose, um, max those out to the furthest extent that you can. Within your investment accounts, you might allocate funds to stocks, bonds, mutual funds, other investments. You do want to consider um, diversification, but again, if you have a longer timeline and you're on the younger side, you can be a little bit more aggressive. But if you're talking retiring early, you really need to know what when your target date is because yeah. that'll determine what you're invested in. Yeah, and, and again, don't be afraid to get guidance. We can actually help invest 401ks, whether it be directly, indirectly, or whatever. TSPs, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, that'll get you a 2 or 3% better return long term. That's a lot of money. Right. And so make sure that, uh, and, and if you don't get help, you know the best idea if you don't get help, Evan? Put it in about 10 or 12 different funds and leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even look at it. I mean, the people that have made some of the best money, they've just ignored it. And then 20 years later, they look at it, all of a sudden they got a million dollars in their 401k mm -hmm. because they saved, they got a match, and they just let the market do its job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, number five, plan carefully. You like that one, don't you, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> plan well and prosper. That's right. right. There you go. That's, yeah, yeah. So have have a plan. Uh, have a we call it a retirement roadmap. We have folks that are twenty five years old. We've developed a roadmap for. Um, most of our clients are fifty and older. That's not a cutoff. I'm just saying that's who most of them are because that's kind of when people start thinking about, hey, what's the next stage of my life? Uh, but but have a plan. I mean, you know, we tell the story about the uh, the trip to California. You know, there's two ways you can go to California from, from Georgia. You can get in your car. You can drive west. Will you get to California? You probably will, but how effective is that? I mean, you know, are you following a road map? Are you ch checking on hotels along the way? What kind of car are you driving? What could go wrong? Um, kind of like retirement. So let's take a look at where you want to be, when you want to be in California, how long you're going to be in California. In other words, how long you, do you think you'll be retired? What's your lifespan, right? And then also, uh, what could go wrong? You know, just like your car can break down, well, on the way to retirement, uh, you know, tax rates could go up 10%. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Congress could change the rules on Social Security or, or the way pensions are taxed. I mean, there's so many different things that can happen. You make that roadmap, but the roadmap is adjustable as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like anything. I mean, you've heard the old saying, people spend more time planning their vacations than their retirement. Yep. And so really, I know, it's, I know it's kind of a longer trek, but it makes it so much more effective and efficient. Yeah. Each of our clients has a specific retirement plan that is particularly catered to them. Exactly uh, to them. Yep. And so if you're yep. interested in that, or even just getting your own um, 10,000 foot view of where you stand today. If you were to just put the key in the ignition and turn on your retirement, um, no planning at all. Let's just see how it looks. Uh, forecast how we look right now where we stand. You can go to our website, masterplanretired.com. There you can schedule your complimentary consultation to have a series of illustrations ran. And, and really, I can't stress it enough, it's, it's really great to just see where you stand. A lot of folks have not been organized on this level or ran reports, stress tested their retirement and see where their strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah, it's very eye opening. And I think sometimes people are, are afraid to see it. Yeah. You know, it's almost like going to the doctor, you know, you're like, I, if I go, I may find out something's wrong with me. Well, that's kind of what we want to know. Right. It's, it may not be great news, but now you have a plan to solve that problem or heal that illness or whatever it may be. And the sooner you do it, the sooner you catch that, the better chance you have of being healthy, just like retirement. The sooner you can start looking at where am I and I want to be here. How do I get there? Am I saving enough, saving too little? Um, and then what are the consequences of, of things that could go wrong? Things will go wrong. Uh, we've got uh, several hundred clients, and I can tell you every week we get a phone call. Maybe, maybe hey, my husband or wife, uh, I think that they're beginning to get uh, some long-term care needs or they've passed away 
or, you know, we don't have enough income coming in and, and now taxes are hitting us. We got a child that moved back in. I mean, there's so many different areas that, that we get phone calls about. And so those reports will really illustrate exactly what it is uh, that, that could trip you up and then have a plan for it, have a strategy for it. So, you know, that, there's a little green button on our website that says schedule an appointment. It's complimentary. Or, hey, you know, give us a call at 770 770- Nine eight zero nine two six two. We do accept phone calls, so we can do it that way as yeah. well. So masterplanretire.com. Plan carefully. So early retirement poses some unique financial challenges. Well, first of all, retirement period requires yeah. unique financial planning challenges. Um, but the earlier that you retire, the greater your longevity risk, which is basically how long will my money last? Will I outlive my money? So how much do you need to retire early? There are some clunky ways to come by, but and, and I'll explain a couple of them in a second, but really it's down to you, who you are as an individual, your lifestyle, what you need, what you have coming in. So the rule of 25 offers a simple answer. It's a very rough estimate, but basically estimate your annual retirement expenses, multiply them by 25, for instance, needing $80,000 annually translates to a savings goal of about 2 million. Uh, that's allowing for a 4% withdrawal every year while preserving your capital. Again, it's very clunky, very, very general. I yeah. don't recommend doing that for yourself. I recommend going to a professional to help you sort out exactly your need. Uh, but especially when you're working with a retirement planner, they can help you maximize your assets in retirement. You know, if if every one of our clients, I mean, you know, barring exception, but if the majority of our clients came in with $2 million dollars, maximizing the efficiency of that money can go a very long way. Yeah, you know, the, the story I like to tell is, is uh, of course, about um, I take a football team, mm-hmm. right? And there's 11 people on a football team. If you make every player 10% better, you've just increased the efficiency of your football team by over 100%. And it's the same way with your money, your, your, your Social Security, maximizing that, maximizing a pension. If you have a pension coming up, minimizing taxes, make them more efficient, right? Um, it's just, there's up to about 15 areas you can actually work on. So if you make every one of those areas, or at least the ones that apply to you, just a little bit better, you have so much have increased the efficiency of your retirement. Mm -hmm. But even on the investing in the money side, I mean, just, you know, eking out an extra 2% growth without taking on any more risk, Uh, you know, being able to have a tool that actually protects your money in a down market, Mm -hmm. but grows it in an up market. That's great for income. So there's so many ways to make it more efficient depending on what that particular uh, pot of money or bucket of money is intended for. And that's what we do every day. And, and it's amazing. We've had so many stories of clients that will come to us many times with tears in their eyes saying, I was going to have to work another three years. But because of what Master Plan did, mm-hmm. I was able to re- retire earlier. My mom got sick. I was able to live with her and help take care of her. You changed my retirement. And yeah. hearing that, I mean, it just uh, brings tears to my eyes as well. Yeah, it really does. I mean, every case is different again, but we do see clients who are surprised to find out, first of all, that they may even be <laughs> able to retire, but maybe they'll be able to retire on less than they expected or even earlier. Um, and that's always, even just showing that information before we implement a plan uh, is really powerful. Yep. Uh, but again, the earlier you retire, the greater your longevity risk, the the you just as much planning needs to go in place for that. So there's the 4% rule. Do you want to explain what that is, Mark? Yeah, the 4% rule came about in, um, I think it was the early to mid 90s, 1993, if I remember correctly. You've probably read it in some uh, articles online or whatever. It's been around since 1993. And it's from a study done by Morningstar and a professor at a business school. And they studied the market over like 50 years going back. And they came to the determination that if you take out 5% a year from a stock market equity account, you have about a 96% uh, percent chance of your money lasting through retirement. Okay. And I think they might've used 30 years. So a million dollars, um, you know, 4% is 40,000 a year, pretty good chance you won't run out of money. They redid the study mm-hmm. uh, in the mid to late 2000s. Actually, I think, I think it was 2012, if I remember uh, correctly. It was after the Great Recession. It was after the tech bubble. It was after the, the lost decade of uh, between the year 2000 and 2009. The new rule is 2.8%. Mm-hmm. 
And so now you can only take out, so that's only, you know, instead of being 40,000, that's 28,000. And again, you're not assured of it lasting a lifetime. There's a good chance it'll last a lifetime. Yeah. And so uh, we don't like income coming from an equity stock market account. So we have other tools, the one I just mentioned, where principal protected, guaranteed stream of income, it's like an additional social security payment that you know is not gonna go away, it can actually keep up with inflation, 100% chance of not running out of money. Yeah. And so again, that's just one or two tools that we use, but it gives peace of mind and people don't have to, can you imagine waking up every morning in retirement and knowing that your check is coming from your 401k or IRA, and that morning the market lost 15%. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it would drive me crazy looking at that every morning, hoping that, hey, I hope we have a gain because that check's coming out. And if you're having to take out 20 and 30, $40,000 a year to supplement your income, which is about the average, that's a little scary. And so how much do you need to keep up with that? It's, it's hard to say. I mean, if you retired in the year 2006, and well, we know what happened in 2008, 2009, a 56% drop, You'll never recover from that if you're taking income from that. So have an income plan that includes guaranteed streams of, uh, streams of income. Absolutely. And, you know, the typical retirement timeline for those retirement in their 50s or early 60s or whatever, we usually recommend at, uh, somewhere around five years of planning time to let certain accounts mature and everything else. That's the perfect Just world. <laughs> keep in mind, if you're retiring early, not, all, not only do you have a longer time your money has to last in retirement, you have a shorter time to accumulate as well. So it mm -hmm. takes extra planning for that. I also want to mention, we're running out of time a little bit, but uh, consider your tax implications as an early retiree, Big especially one. if you have qualified accounts, especially if you've got employer-sponsored plans, things like that. Um, there are penalties for early withdrawal, so make sure that you're covered for that. Speak to a professional. Um, let's see, anything else on this, uh, given our timeline? Well, basically, I, I would say the other one, I don't think we mentioned medical. Yeah, yeah. That so was if you retire here. early, um, you, you don't qualify for Medicare until age 65. And if you retire at 55, where are you getting health insurance from? Yeah. The open market, very expensive. What's the plan? Okay, so there are a little some things you can consider, some ideas we can give you. Um, so again, if that's one of the things that would be a concern or should be a concern, if you retire before the age of 65, uh, then you definitely, now you could, you know, you could marry somebody a lot older and, or, or younger that's still working and stay on their health insurance maybe. And so there's ways around that, but you know, don't forget 65 is the magic age for Medicare. One more point before we move to the next topic that I think is pretty critical. If you're retiring early and you're expecting money from a pension or some sort of retirement plan, talk to your HR representative. Make sure you're getting your full pension, things like that. It may be smaller or maybe you can't take it till a certain age. Absolutely. Yep. So that was planning. Make sure you plan for your <laughs> exactly. early retirement. Um, critical. Number six, simply make sure it's right for you. You know. Exiting the rat race as swiftly as possible is a dream that is shared by many. However, retiring early can require significant sacrifices and discipline that may many find too challenging, especially when observing friends and family, maybe embracing a more affluent lifestyle. But also sometimes people aren't ready. There's a lot of purpose that we tie into our work, whether that's a good thing or not. But there is an identity struggle when you transfer from one phase of life to another, mm -hmm. whether it's typical retirement timeline or earlier, it's feels really fun to travel and go to the beach for a couple of years, but pretty soon, are you still finding meaning in your life? Yeah, and it's not its not just about the beach. It's about, uh, you know, goal setting and, and camaraderie with, uh, you know, with other uh, people you work with, uh, pursuing goals at work, um, you know, the challenge of work, things like that. You lose that, and, you know, there's certain ways you can replace some of that. Or, or maybe uh, you know get a part-time job or whatever. But that is a critical element. And we have people that struggle with that when they retire. Yeah. So be careful with that. Absolutely. Well, folks, this has been great. Uh, felt rushed once again. We've got we've to edit a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> it's a good topic and uh, we appreciate your time and thanks for listening. Mark, any closing words for Hey, us? hope to see you again soon. Plan well and prosper. Take care. This was Retirement Roadmap Radio with Mark Fricks of Master Plan Retirement Consultants. To schedule a complimentary consultation, go to masterplanretire.com or call 770-980-9262. Thanks for listening and remember, 
plan well and prosper. All matters discussed during the show are for informational purposes only. Each individual situation may vary and the opinions expressed here may not apply to everyone. Materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources and no representations can be made as to its accuracy. All ideas and information should be discussed in detail with one of our qualified representatives prior to implementation. Advisory services offered through Master Plan Retirement Consultants, a registered investment advisor in the state of Georgia. Mark Fricks and Master Plan Retirement Consultants are not affiliated with or endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency.